Did you know that one of my favourite events to go to are weddings? You get to wear fancy shoes, meet new people and talk about decor. Who doesn't want that? Me, I don't want that. Nobody does. That intro is all lies to draw you in so you can hear me moan for a bit. Can you believe I get paid for this? Which reminds me, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Yes, Skillshare, as you all know, is an online learning community with more inspiring and creative classes than an opticians, if you sometimes spell classes with a G. Yep, my jokes are definitely getting worse. So if you've ever considered investing in yourself for some personal growth, trying something new to find a talent, or expanding a new skill to help you in the pursuit to quit your job, start a proper career, climb the ladder step by step over many years until you own the very company you used to work for just so you can take revenge and fire your old boss because he made you mop an already clean floor when you finished your other jobs too quickly because apparently good employees get punished with more work. Hey Linda, can we go ahead and fire Tom Fitzgerald please? Tom Fitzgerald left three years ago. I believe he's working at SpaceX now sir. Ah, shit. Linda, would you mind seeing if Skillshare have any classes on rocket engineering, please? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. I've recently finished a class over there called The Writer's Toolkit, Six Steps to a Successful Writing Habit, by Simon Van Boy, which is not so much a class about writing, but more so a class on how to best achieve that elusive unicorn all creatives chase called Creative Flow. Simon has some top shelf tips and tricks that are invaluable to get you in that state of mind before you start to tackle your own work, so I highly recommend giving it a look if that's something you struggle with. So if you're on the hunt to sharpen your skills or add a new playlist to your intellectual library, then the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up through the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there that like to attend a wedding or two, and if I was a betting man I'd wager it's the same people whose genitals whistle in the wind, but I never liked them. Every time I get dragged to one it feels like a punishment. Hey, we're going to a wedding in July. Ah. What did I do now? But can you blame me though? Out of all the random invites to things my missus endlessly smothers me with month to month, weddings are by far the worst. She sees it as a lovely day out, an excuse to dress up all fancy, pick out at a meal and drunkenly hit the dance floor when the DJ starts playing some modern hits like Summer of 69, Living on a Prayer and Cotton Eye Joe. Trust me, if you want to drop from alcohol poisoning at a wedding, take a shot every time you hear a song that came out before 1995. But to me, a wedding invite isn't so lovely. It's like saying, here you go, this is an invitation to take an unpaid day off work, rent a suit, pay for travel to a hotel that'll also be 120 quid a night, all to sit there and watch us dedicate an entire day of your life to celebrate how great we think our relationship is. And by the way, it's customary to give us a few pound in a card, so don't be cheap. It's just an expense to partake in two people's vanity. And that's not to mention the cost the bride and groom got a dish out just to have it. Ah yes, crippling financial debt. The perfect way to kick off a romantic union. But that being said, even though I do have some great arguments for why I shouldn't have to go to him, Connie has the power of sexual favours on her side and it took me long enough to train her in as is so I have to reluctantly agree to some. Can we all agree on one thing though? Weddings are only for the bride. I've argued this a lot with people, partly because wedding ceremonies are too long and I need ways to help me forget about the pain in my arse that church pews are especially designed to provide, but mostly because it's true. It just is. Tell me, how many exotic dancer themed weddings have you been to? How tasty was a rack of barbecue ribs and burgers you were served at the meal? How many unreal cares did the groom talk about during his vows? Exactly. It's all flowers, dancing and romance. Typical feminine things. Granted, I've yet to go to a gay wedding so my scope is a little bit limited, but honestly I think I could have a lot of fun with that. You see that? Your days are numbered, girl. What? Those fellas were the first to push for gay rights, we invented the sex change, and now we can marry each other. You women don't realise we're only a breakthrough in childbirth away from not having to put up with your sh** anymore. But if you're still not convinced, then just have a look at the wedding entrances. Everything falls silent. Everyone's on their feet and turned to gaze awaiting for the bride. Then, there she is. The angel of the moment enters the venue and starts walking down the aisle atop of flowers scattered on the floor especially for her, all to the tune of a lovely musical score you'd expect to hear if the Lord himself descended from the heavens. Women in the aisles crying out of envy, awe and habit. Men smiling softly at her because they're not quite sure what to do in these moments. Bridesmaids smiling through anger because they were forced to wear ugly dresses so the attractive ones don't outshine the bride. Everyone is in agreement. Never has a more perfect being existed as she takes her place at the altar where her groom awaits. The groom's already there? He didn't get an entrance? No, because this day is about her, so f him. If us lads could have our way, weddings would be a lot different. For my entrance, I want to be walking down the aisle to the tune of another one bites the dust, with the aisles flanked with gaggles of attractive women crying at the devastating news that my pipe is well and truly off the market. The boys will be cheering me on through the power of football chants, and most importantly, to balance the scales a little bit, she'll have to sign a contract at the altar with the power to terminate the marriage if she can't meet the monthly slob job quota or yearly weigh-ins. If we had that, we might be able to put up with the post-ceremony 
crow is a bit better. You know the ones, people who repeat the same small talk over and over outside a church like they're trying to get you to join their cult or something. Her makeup was fab. Wasn't she beautiful? Wasn't the bride lovely? Oh, the dress was lovely. What did you think of her dress? A beautiful couple. She looked oh, smashing. Oh, the dress was gorgeous. Wasn't the bride lovely? Wasn't she beautiful? Wasn't the dress smashing? Thankfully at this stage of the day, it's finally socially acceptable to drink, so you can make your way to the overpriced hotel in the middle of nowhere and visit an even more overpriced hotel bar. That's 650 please. Look out that window and tell me what county you see. Uh, Carlo? Well until that changes to Bel Air, you can take a fiver and be happy about it. But I will warn you, it's best to go handy on the booze at this stage because the meal you'll need to act as some soakage will arrive much later than you expect. And if you don't pace yourself, you'll be well on your way to getting pissed before you even touch the starter. Trust me, have a look around all the tables when the meals are being brought out and there'll be more flushed faces than the top step of an Overeaters Anonymous clinic. Speaking of tables, I can tell you one thing. People vastly overestimate how interesting their friends are. And you'll discover this when you're put at a table of varied strangers. Two of them you might be lucky to know, and the rest of them will be an absolute carnival of creatures. You'll have one that'll be falling asleep at the table because he thought half eight this morning would be a great time to kick the party off, a couple that'll miss the speeches because they smoke more than a pinched or slit on Valentine's Day, an eater so fussy it's a scientific mystery how they got the 27 stone, an unfussy eater rotating his way around the tables like a seasoned charity worker bargaining for a couple of forkfuls of potatoes gratin, someone who knew about the wedding for over a year and still managed to only arrive with a fiver to their name and no idea where they're sleeping tonight, who's also usually the one who's only there in hopes he can prey on emotionally weakened women who's had their defences broken because the lovely atmosphere of the day is only serving to contrast and highlight how unhappy she is in her own romantic life and will now take any attention to dull the feelings of desperation filling her lungs. But before that, he'll be happy to fill you in on some of his riveting achievements, like how he once won 250 euro on a horse, and how when he was 16 he got to feel the bride's dick behind the centra. But before long, it's finally time to eat, and you're looking forward to this because you are ravenous. Let's be fair, you probably haven't eaten for hours, if not even all day, because you've gone up a size since the last time you wore these formal clothes, and you know well that your trouser button's only about 3 calories away from taking out the chandelier. So with a growling stomach, you start to prep your cutlery in front of you with the vibe of a skilled surgeon. Make sure the butter is there, the salt and the pepper is within arm's reach, and then finally you get to chow down on some Ah, no, the f***ing speeches. Why do they always do the speeches before the dinner? Surely the most opportune time to tell stories is when we've all eaten and don't want to move for a bit. Not pre-meal when we're all hangry. It's not like I hate the speeches. Okay, I do. Why do I need to hear a summary of their lives? I'm not writing a f***ing book. But there is some good to be gotten out of them, in the form of the best man speech. Let's be fair, out of all the wedding guests, the best man is the lad you'd most like to go on the piss with. He's the one you can rely on, the unsung hero to take a sledgehammer to this faux illusion of Hollywood romance and high society dining that we've all been hypnotised into believing throughout the day, and bring it back down to reality with some good old salt of the earth dirty banter. Honestly, I think they could say anything at this point, and it'll win me over. <coughs> Balls. Ha! Legend. But unfortunately, it can't be all good crack. No, the bride and groom gotta get up and say their bit. Thanks everyone for coming. Let me tell you about how we met. Big thanks to the hotel and staff who profoundly overcharged us for this venue. Thanks to Mary for doing the makeup. Father Maloney, who did a great job on the ceremony, and Samantha, who brought her eight-month-old to the church, who proceeded to cry not only through all the vows, but the entire ceremony. No worry, Samantha. This day only cost us 30 grand. Usual boring stuff. But not only do they drone on to the point it's become tradition for hungry guests to take bets on how long the speeches will be in an attempt to inject some action into the boredom, but they also go ahead and turn down the crackometer by dragging everybody through the graveyard of their lives. Anybody who they've ever known who has died gets a mention. My gran aunt Deirdre, my cat Hope, who I had when I was six, Ray Liotta, I really enjoyed him in Goodfellas. And you're just there with your stomach audibly rotting out of you like, I'm gonna have to add my name to that f***ing list that we don't get a move on. Ducky, behave yourself. But finally, after they finish reading from RIP.ie, it's time to eat, drink and awkwardly mingle in the corner with a few people you can barely tolerate to be with, knowing all you'll have to tolerate now is the occasional old f prodding you with his finger telling you you'll be next in a manner that's more threatening than promising. But hey, at least at this time, the worst is behind you. Hey, my cousin Liam just got engaged. Ah, oh, f**k. <laughs>